let's take a look at problem 64A. This has us selling some inventory. The customer makes a return and they pay us within a discount period. It's fairly complicated. As always, I recommend downloading these problems from TonyBell.com. When you click the PDF link, there is no sign up. There's no sign in. There's no nothing. Scroll down, find whatever problem it is we are working on. As you scroll down, you can't help but notice there are free videos as you're watching. This one is a free one. There are also members only videos. If you're interested in joining and getting a channel member, getting access to all those extra videos hit the join button beneath this video so uh the following transactions occurred for smithco a plumbing retailer i don't know why we need to know they're a plumber uh or plumbing retailer january 6th with a sold three thousand we sold three thousand dollars of inventory on account the inventory cost twelve hundred dollars remember when we are making sales of inventory, there are two simultaneous transactions. One to record that there's a revenue side to this, and the second to record the fact that inventory walks out the door with our customer. We are losing an asset, all right? Every time you make a sale as a retailer, your assets go down. So two journal entries to be made for every sale. Let's do the January 6th sale. Uh... So uh, sold $3,000. Okay, so when you make a sale, debit cash if it's for cash, but in this case, it's on account. So we're gonna debit AR accounts receivable, $3,000. The credit here is of course to sales revenue, $3,000. Now it says our cost on this stuff, our cost of goods was $1,200. Uh, we credit inventory because inventory walked out the door with our customer. $1,200 and the debit is to COGS, cost of goods sold, that very special expense account. Okay, January 11th, inventory was returned. It was not broken or damaged, just the wrong item. A uh, $100 credit was applied to the customer's account. The returned inventory at a cost of $40. Okay, so the customer brings back inventory and we're able to sell it again. That's important distinction, right? Sometimes the customer will bring back inventory that's broken, you gotta throw it in the garbage. In this case though, it is good inventory that they're returning on January 11th. So what do we do on January 11th? Well, uh, because the inventory is good, we're gonna put it back on the shelf. Let's actually start by giving the customer a hundred dollar credit, right? They return a bunch of inventory. We say, you don't have to pay for this. So let's credit our AR, cause we're not gonna collect that hundred that they've returned. Credit AR, the debit here is to a new account called sales returns. And we track our sales returns and we would likely do it by product because you want to know which products are getting returned. Maybe you don't reorder them uh, because they're, you know, lower quality product or frequently returned. I go on Amazon right now. It says this item is frequently returned when I go to order certain things. And the reason is it's a pain for you as the retailer. So you to keep track of your returns and we use an account called sales returns. You'll recall if you watched previous videos in this series that this creates this new uh, calculation, sales revenue minus any sales returns minus any discounts that we provide to our customer equals sales, oops, sales revenue net, net sales. And if we look up uh, our favorite retailer, Walmart, uh, here's Walmart's income statement. I just wanted to bring down to this revenue amount. You can see how they present their revenue. It's net sales, or I'm trying to highlight it, but it's not working. There we go. Uh, so retailers show their sales net, and this is how they calculate that amount. So this $100 is a reduction in our gross sales to get us net sales. Okay, so anyway, they've returned it. We've reduced the receivable good for us now because the inventory is good inventory in other words it wasn't damaged they just bought the wrong thing uh we put it back on the shelf we're going to try to sell it to somebody else we debit inventory they brought back some inventory we're going to put 40 dollars of inventory that's our cost on it back on the shelf and we reduce 
our cogs because we're saying, well, that inventory we thought we had sold. We want debit cogs, credit inventory. That sale never happened. So get rid of the cogs because it's inventory that was not sold at the end of the day. Last one, January 15th, we get paid. Now, how much do we get paid? Okay. Uh, well, they owed us $3,000, but then they returned $100 worth of goods. So they only owe us $2,900, right? They owed us $3,000. They returned $100. They only owe us $2,900. Now, something I, I failed to mention, I should have, was there's terms on this. There's early payment discount that we're offering. Uh, and do they qualify? Well, terms 210 net 30 means they get a 2% discount if they pay within 10 days. They bought on January 6th. They pay on January 15th. Did they pay within 10 days? Yes. So they're going to claim a 2% discount on this 2,900 times 2%. I think it's 58 bucks. Yeah, it's $58. So they're going to take a $58 discount. So what are they going to pay us? They're going to pay us 2,900 minus the discount. They're going to pay us 2842. So let's debit cash for that amount, 2842. We're going to credit AR for the full amount, which was uh, 2900 as of this date. And then that $58 discount, uh, when we did this as a purchaser, we credited inventory. When we do it as a seller, we debit an account called sales discounts, or I'll just put discounts. $58. That's it. We've done all of the journal entries for part A. Something that wasn't asked that's worth doing, that's worth calculating here, is what is our net sales? Well, up above, we said it's our sales revenue minus any discounts minus any returns. So our sales revenue is $3,000, but then they returned $100, so it's only $2,900. And then we discounted it by $58. So our net sales here, after all is said and done, is $2,842. That should make sense. That's how much we got paid, right? That's our net revenue. That's what shareholders are going to be most interested in. So our net sales... 28.42 sales net. Our cost of goods is the COGS, 1,200, but then minus 40. Our cost of goods is 1,160. Sales minus COGS is gross profit. 28.42 minus 1,160 is 16.82. That's our gross profit. This is also called gross margin. So that wasn't asked for, but I often ask my students to do that. Now, I also ask them to give me the gross profit as a percentage of sales. So if sales are 100%, cost of goods is 1160 divided by 2842, 40.8%. And our gross profit is 59.2%. That's 1682 divided by 2842. 59.2%. So that is a number that any retail store will track very carefully, but that's sort of bonus content to part A. Part B says, redo the January 11th entry, redo January 11th, assuming the inventory was returned in bad condition and needed to be scrapped. Assume that full credit of $100 was granted, but the returned inventory had $0 of value. Okay, so I'm just going to do January 11th sort of alternate history here in blue ink sort of alongside here so january oh my pen is too big let's uh shrink that by one let's see january 11th yeah there we go sorry jan 11th and so we're just redoing this entry so what does that look like if the inventory was garbage well we still debit sales returns $100. We credit their AR by $100 because we're giving them store credit. Even though they bring in back garbage, maybe it, you know, it got damaged in shipping and we're we're willing to eat it, you know, it's a good customer and we're saying, "Okay, well, we'll eat this one." So we're saying, "You don't owe us the $100 for that one." Now, in terms of debit inventory credit cogs, what's the value of the inventory they're giving us back? 0. So in fact, you don't need to do this part. 
So it would just be debit sales returns, credit AR. You could debit inventory credit cogs for the value you got back zero, but you don't need to do journal entries for things that are zeros. And there we have it. We have solved part B. We've solved the whole thing. Well done. As always, if these videos are helping, I do hope you'll consider helping me out. The, the likes and subs very much help uh, the channel. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. The next video in our series is right up here. And if you want a supercut of all of the videos in this series, that's the one down below.